what it boils down to is this, is right now my faith in Polkadot is really shaken. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Claudio and this is Cryptos Chain, the channel that brings you crypto news, reviews, tutorials, and interviews. And today I'm not actually going to do an interview. It's more of a collab video because I've known Ben for a long time since I started my channel, like back in 2018. You are actually the second guy on my channel. Whoa. Uh, yeah, actually the second person, I should say, the first guy, second person, because the first person was Crypto NDO. Oh, really? Uh, How about yeah, that? yeah, I had like 100 subscribers or so. And I think I had like almost 200 when I had you and you had like 2K or so. I was so, so yeah. big back then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You were and lucky, bro. You were, you were lucky I even well. responded at 2,000 subscribers. I was big time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. And that was a great time because uh, it was like the time when everyone was like so depressed at crypto. You know, it's like right after April or May or something like that. Yeah, I think the first two months were like okay-ish because people are st still had hope, you know, oh no, we're going to recover, everything's going to be fine. And it goes back to what happened in 2021 as well. Like as soon as we started dropping in November and then by the time we got to like say January 2022, people like were hoping that, oh no, it's going to come back, it's going to bounce back one yeah. more time. And then it never happened, you know, it caught us off guard. So yeah, absolutely insane. But Ben, how have you been doing? What are you up to? And uh, yeah, just, I mean, people probably know who you are, but just in case. Yeah. Just a quick, a quick short intro, please. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ben. People call me BitBoy Crypto. I don't know why they started doing that, but they did that. Uh, I run the largest American YouTube channel, um, the largest reach of, uh, you know, any, any influencer in the crypto space between all of our socials. And uh, very proud of that. Uh, very proud of our community. We call it the Bit Squad. We'd love people to come join. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, what I've been doing is, uh, you know, fighting the powers that be, um, you know, going against FTX. We called out FTX several weeks before they actually went and it was revealed several weeks before it was revealed that they were insolvent. They'd actually been insolvent for uh, many months at that point, at least at minimum. Um, but the, the whole idea is, uh, you know, we fight for crypto. We fight for decentralization. We fight for the values in the space. Um, and, uh, you know, we definitely want to work at, uh, keeping bad actors out in the future. And, uh, there's bad actors, uh, in the game right now. Just know we're coming for you. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we're going to talk about FBF, SBF for a moment as well. But first, like, what, what do you think of the current market? First of all, let's just say that, like, did you expect this to happen so soon considering so many uh, institutional investors got in, like so many more people got in uh, compared to the last, uh, bull market that we had in 2017 i mean what what do you think of this one like did you expect this to happen this kind of crash or or were you like thinking this is going to take maybe another year or so oh no oh no i i called it exactly so far now certainly if we end up going lower if we end up going to nine thousand dollars in the middle of next year we'll turn out to be wrong Basically, what happened is, uh, you know, last year, a lot of people know, you know, we, we said Bitcoin was going to 100,000. We, we failed on that. Uh, but uh, what we have been doing is for two years or two and a half years before that, we have been saying we thought the market would peak between Halloween and Thanksgiving of 2021. Well, it did. We just got so focused on the number that we missed it. Um, we had called that out based on the four year Bitcoin cycles. And so we were still hopeful Bitcoin was going to be able to get a, above 100K stupidly, naively now at this point. And so in April, when I, in about January, in the middle of January, I made a statement. I said, if you guys don't think Bitcoin can go below $20,000, you haven't been here long. And a lot of people made fun of me for saying that. <laughs> Look where we're at now. A lot of people made fun of me. I was on crypto uh, banner last year. Half, over half the people on the show were telling me there's never going to be a bear market again. No, no, guys, next year, there's going to be a bear market. So in April, we officially gave up the dream of $100,000 Bitcoin for the cycle. And we said, it is a bear market. In the beginning of May, we put out a video and we we call ourselves a, a four-year Bitcoin cycle fundamentalist because we believe in the four-year cycles. We believe they're powerful. And while they may not be exact, they, they, they rhyme, the, the correlation is strong enough where you can make, so far, you've been able to make decisions based on that four-year cycle. So in April, we called it a bear market. Beginning of May, we put out a video and said, we should see the bottom of Bitcoin between three to five weeks following the midterm elections uh, in America, which were two, uh, a week and a half ago, okay? Every midterm election cycle, we've seen the bottom of Bitcoin within five weeks. So we've been saying since the beginning of April, or beginning of May, excuse me, the bottom for Bitcoin will be the end of November to the middle of December. And people laughed at us. They said, no, the bottom's in, the bottom's in, the bottom's in, blah, 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 blah. 
guys, just keep making fun of that Bitcoin cycle. Keep making fun of it. It just keeps doing the exact same thing. Uh, and I think we're on track for that. Now, there are some scenarios at this point, certainly. Everybody tells you this. It's different this time. It's different at this time. It's different. It's not different. There are some things that could make it different. If GBTC is discovered to be insolvent and Digital Currency Group is insolvent, Silvergate Bank goes insolvent, we have a mess on our hands and we could be looking at a nightmare scenario. Even that being said, if you go back to 2012 when I first got into Bitcoin, the number one exchange was Mt. Gox. It was the only exchange you could pretty much use that I even knew existed. Yeah. Fast forward to February of 2014, Mt. Gox gets hacked. It's dead. 90% of Bitcoin transactions, which by the way, at that point, I believe was Bitcoin dominance was like 90 to 95% of the entire market. So you're basically saying 85% at least of the entire crypto market was on Mt. Gox and it got hacked and all those people lost their money and Bitcoin still didn't go down, uh, you know, much more zero. than average. It's still in that 85% range. So it, we can't look today and see that what's happened with FTX and Alameda is worse than what happened with Mt. Gox. Mm -hmm. Mt. Gox was the market and it's still recovered. Uh, so I, I still lean towards the Bitcoin cycles and I, I do believe that we are going to see uh, you know, sideways action next year. We're going to see a bottom for Bitcoin this year, probably around 14,000, 12 to 14,000, somewhere in that range. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, considering the macro situation, what do you like, how do you see this? How do you see us coming back? Because this is such a tough situation. It's unlike other bear markets where maybe there were some political issues, but like we hadn't seen a war, right? And now we've got Russia attacking Ukraine, as you know. I hope YouTube is not going to block did, me for did, this. Not, did, well, I mean, are you, are you not concerned Korea about uh, like a potential... Sorry, go go ahead. What you're saying is, uh, you're actually given a scenario that we've already seen before. Yeah. <laughs> you had 2014, no. you had Mt. Gox crash in February. You have... The bit license come to New York in July of 2014, which got in that it was enacted in 2014. Excuse me. It was voted in 2014. It was enacted in 2015. And you did have Russia going at Crimea in that same time range. Yes. And the market was smaller. So it had a bigger impact. So I would say we actually kind of have seen this playbook before. I, I don't think there's anything we could see this time outside of a collapse of digital currency group and, and, and Silvergate Bank and, uh, you know, uh, GBTC, which would affect the stock market and traditional finance as well. If that kind of Armageddon scenario happens, we could see something different. But what you've laid out, we've already kind of seen, and this is what I really try to tell people that, that are newer. I know you're not newer to this market, but for people that are newer to this market, guys, we've seen a lot. We've been through a lot in this. There's always a black swan in the, black, in the bear markets to send this down. People didn't think we were going to see Roger Veer and Craig Wright fall out of love with each other uh, in 2018 <laughs> and, and see the hash wars between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Cash SV that ultimately sent us to the bottom. It was a very sad, depressing time during then. Uh, you know, we did a little challenge on Twitter called the Salt Season Challenge where we would pour salt on our heads because that big water, the water challenge was going on, if you remember, for ALS and stuff at that yeah. time. And people did not like that. They did not think that was funny. Nobody wanted anything funny back in 2018. Um, and we made it through that. We're going to make it through this again. And, and I think these are all overall positive things for the space. Removing FTX, removing Sam Bankman fried removing the stock market 2.0 bros. Let's get rid of them. That's going to help us in the next cycle. Having tighter rules in, 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 for what people are promoting, that's going to be coming this year, next year most likely. That's going to be better because now people are not going to be promoting things that, um, you know, are – Going to end up, well, I mean, certainly who knows what could, I mean, maybe Solana, you know, some people would say Solana is a rug pull at this point, which it's not, but FTT is certainly looking like one. So it's really impossible to know which coins are good and which ones are bad, but we're going to have better rules around that to keep people safer. In America here, uh, I, we have our own bill that we're, we're hopefully going to be making public very soon, hopefully by the end of this month, beginning of next month. Uh, and this solves a lot of this crypto regulation problem that people are having. So what I'm trying to say here is everything looks dark right now. Like everything looks dark and it looks bad, but there's a lot of lights at the ends of these tunnels. And the fact that we're starting to see some of these lights show up, to me, that's kind of evidence that we could be near the bottom here. Um, and I think we do bounce back. And look, we've got, there, listen, I had a live stream uh, three, three days this week. My live stream has been over 10,000 concurrent viewers, right? The most has been in a long time. You may say, well, yeah, well, it's really negative. People are losing money. 
the fact that in a bear market, I can get more viewers on a live stream than any YouTuber at the peak of the 2017 market had on one live stream, that shows you how much further the space has grown and how many more believers we have. We've got a lot more believers here to pick up the pieces in the rubble than we did in 2014, than we did in 2018. So, you know, that stuff to me is actually encouraging. There is something I want to point out there. There's also a lot more people that are caught now that bought the top and are waiting for those bags to go back up. As you know, we were those right. kind of people ourselves in 2018, yep. let's face it. So I can definitely say that there are a lot of them doing that right now and are thinking, oh, we're going to go back up and we will go back up. But my concern is when will those people lose hope? At what point, yeah. you know, and uh, how long will it really take until we see a market recovery? Uh, yeah, you I, know, think, that's, that's I think my those people will concern. leave in about a year. About a year from now is when they'll Yeah, I, I personally think, and I said it on this channel as well, I personally think it's going to be six to eight months after the next Bitcoin halving, assuming that there's going to be no nuclear war. Because let's face it, if that does happen, then we're screwed. You know, that's crypto is going to be the last thing everyone, anyone thinks about. You know, and um, that is a concern, I think. You know, hopefully it's not going to happen, but, you know, it's definitely on the table. Uh, let's talk but about... I, I think for you being a little closer to it than I am. I am. Uh, I am closer to it, unfortunately. You guys <laughs> think about it a lot more. It's, it, it's, it's a hard scenario for me to imagine. Now, look, certainly there is possibility of nuclear threat when it comes to rogue actors, standalone yeah. actors. Uh, you know, like when you were looking at ISIS or Al Qaeda back in the day, they yeah. certainly would, would would let one of those go if they could have uh, during that time. In, in terms of an actual state actor, um, like like Putin firing off uh, nuclear war or Zelensky, I just don't see it. They, they understand. Like, here, let, let me tell you what would happen. Uh, this is my opinion. What would happen is if Putin asked his people to send a nuclear weapon whether it be to the United States or be to Europe or uh, be to, I mean, you know, God forbid China. I don't think they would send it to China, but you understand what I'm saying? They would buck up against him and they wouldn't do it. He would, Putin would end up out of power and dead if he asked him to do that. Uh, because the people that would have to carry that action out, they understand the weight of it and they understand what that would mean for their country and their families. And I just can't see, even if he gave the order, unless he went and specifically pushed the button, I just don't see that actually happening. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I mean, let's hope things are going to be okay. You know, yeah. I mean, we've already seen so much shit in this market that uh, let's hope things are going to be fine. Uh, let's talk about the next topic here. And uh, I know you wanted to tell me something about DOT as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay. But, are you uh, still like an all DOT me. channel? Sorry? Are you are you still like uh, like big on DOT? Like you're an all very, DOT channel? Very big. Yeah, pretty much? yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just Polkadot. It's the whole ecosystem. It's right, all the Kusama. projects that are building, all the layer yeah. ones building on top of the um, Polkadot. Uh, so did you make any investments in this bear market since it started aside from Bitcoin and Ethereum? Don't tell me the names because we don't want to be shilling anything just in case we get into trouble. Now we've seen how sensitive this topic can be yeah. all of a sudden, but have you made any investments in this bear market aside from Bitcoin and Ethereum into old coins? Yeah, and certainly. I'm talking we, about I mean, buying, buying from exchanges or investing at like uh, a private sale or whatever, you know, that kind of investment. Well, I got a guy on the corner I go to. I'd bring some cash and I'll come back with some, with some ripple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, look, so, it, look, we, we, oh. we have a, a portfolio video we do every Friday yeah. uh, where we've created sample. And they're, they're not samples. We actually have money and they're real portfolios, uh, a $1,000 portfolio a, a $10,000 portfolio, a $25,000 portfolio, uh, as well as an, an ISO 20022 potential coin portfolio that yeah. uh, we have put $5,000 into. They're all down a little bit right now because we've been doing it for a few months. And obviously we've I saw, had a I saw of... some of those videos. Yeah. But I mean, aside from that video, which is educational, I get that. But I mean, from your personal. Well, those are actual portfolio. moves that we're making. Those are literally part of our portfolio. So there's all our right. coins that we're adding. But in terms of, of like, what people had to understand is I lost a lot of money on Celsius, right? Mm -hmm. I lost $3 million. Now, what people have to understand, that $3 million was $15 million at the peak. We also took out a lot of money and we put it in real estate. We got about $10 million in real estate. That's good. Uh, that well. was a good move. It was a good move. Yeah. It's um, yeah. I mean, even if real estate does drop, it's never going to drop as much as crypto. So you can exactly. always learn from that. Yeah. Exactly. So, so those turn out to be some good moves. Um, but but when you look at actually like at the peak of our crypto portfolio, it was $35 million. We told you 15 turned into three, turned into zero. We told you 10 million went somewhere else. We just don't have a gigantic amount sitting in crypto right now. We've got a lot in stables that we can move back in. 
but we haven't really done that yet. And we may not do that for a while still, even if prices are good. We have a large business here that we run that we've got 50 employees that got to keep pay, getting paid. And, um, you know, we don't want to lay people off and, and we want our business to keep functioning, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not like I'm sitting. Look, there, there's a lot of these influencers out here are billionaires. OK, the, the, there are crypto influencers who are billionaires. I'm one of the poorest crypto influencers, just so everybody knows, out of all the major ones. There's about there's about five of us that are not in the nine-figure range. A lot of these other guys are nine figures and up, right? So what that means is I can't just willy-nilly throw money at everything. You know, like we're we're having problems raising money for our bill. We're having problems raising $3 million for our bill. So, you know, I, I'm not saying <laughs> – I bought this at the peak of the market, you know, three thousand dollars <laughs> jacket at the peak of the market, right? This is not indicative of the kind of decisions that we're we're making today financially. Yeah. Um. So, so the whole point is this: I don't have a super gigantic crypto portfolio that we're sitting on right now that we're not showing people. It's more like almost all of the altcoins that we we had were on Celsius and locked up oh. and still locked up to this day. So yeah. if we're able to get those coins back, it will immediately add a lot more diversity to our portfolio. But we're not what what we're really aiming to do is create more ways to generate income in crypto over the next two years, just like we did in the last market. It's going to be different this year. We're not doing, uh, you know, we're obviously not doing coin promotions or sponsored videos. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So I know you've, you've had some trouble with that. And the, I mean, the question is like, yeah. I mean, you still need to survive as a business and I can totally understand that. Like if mm -hmm. I, if I was running a business like that, I mean, I don't run a business. It's just me and I still do paid, paid videos, right? It's, it's how it is. And, and this yeah. is how you survive in this, in this market as well. But as long as you're disclosing and you're being transparent to your community, that's all well and good. Now, however, some of those can rug and it, it hasn't happened to me yet, thankfully, you know, but sure it can like happen. It. And unfortunately, I know it did happen to you. So yeah. I'm thinking like, from a, from a legal point of view, I mean, are you concerned that the SEC could go after you eventually? If no, le le start... legal, legal's not an issue here. Le I don't believe legal's an issue because, number one, they would have to prove that uh, whatever the coin was, was a security, right? It's got to be a security. They can't go after it. So right. they've got to establish a security. And, and what they did with Ian Bellino when they went after him is they went after Spark yeah. Token or Spark Point, whatever it was called. I think it was Spark Token, but Spark Point is the name of the company. And they basically settled with them to get them to admit they were a security because the token's dead. And then they sold Ian up the river. Spark token did. And so that's mm -hmm. really what's going on in that situation. It's not what everybody thinks that it is. It's not like they're just going after him because he promoted something. They had already worked out this deal with Spark token on the back end of it. So, uh, Lee, and I, I think he's going to get, he's going to, he's not going to go to jail or, or he's not going to get up sued by the SEC or he's not going to lose, I don't believe, because. A lot of the, and I know factually, a lot of the evidence that the SEC has is false. Like it's literally fake. Like it's really, he has documentation showing that it's not true. A lot of the allegations. I'm not worried about the SEC at all because we disclosed every single promotion we ever did. I'm more concerned about crypto. And I understand what you mean about we need to do promotions to, to survive as channels in businesses. Correct. That, that's why we've actually, after, after 10 months of doing zero sponsorship, zero promotions, giving away all of our YouTube money, we've gone back to having some corporate sponsors, having, uh, we're looking at some hardware wallet sponsors. Uh, we have an exchange sponsor, but we are never, ever, ever going to do another token or coin promotion. Because Why? of the SEC situation no, with securities. False. No faults. No faults. Okay. Because it's bad for crypto. Okay. It's a bad business model. The coins that pay for promotion do not survive 99% of the time. The coins that do survive don't have to do crypto promotion because the products that they're building and putting out speak for themselves. So if you go look at Cardano and Ethereum, Ethereum did some promotion around their ICO, but after their ICO launched, you don't see Ethereum paying influencers to make videos on it. Yeah, but that's Cardano different. I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but that's different you, because you know that's like the second biggest now. At this stage, they've got like so many developers. So you didn't many see H Bar doing it. You 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 didn't see you, now. You did see Algorand in the very beginning. I actually did a sponsor. But what about Algorand. Cardano, for example? Like Cardano, like I've known about Cardano since 2017 myself. Right, right? it's one of the first old coins I've uh -huh. looked into. But I know that a lot of YouTubers, large ones like yourself, are constantly promoting. I know Crypto Crow has that's been not one of the first. Like you, the, there's a difference between promotion. Yeah. And talking about what's in your portfolio. Like, yeah, I know. It's because you guys hold it. But but what I've noticed is... No, it's, 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 it's not because we hold it. 
right? You believe in like, it. I talk, I, talk, I talk about a lot of coins that I think are very favorable that we don't hold. I think ICP is very favorable. I don't hold any ICP. We actually did put some in the sample portfolios today. So the, the literally, I think about uh, $4,000 went in today. But I've been talking about ICP for two weeks. That okay. This idea that we have to own coins to be able to talk about them and that that equates to promotion, I think that's a very negative thought in, in crypto that's not true. And I understand why, because there's no trust in crypto, right? But yeah. just because we own a coin doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to talk about it. Just because we don't own a coin doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about it. Um, I talk about uh, a, a lot of projects uh, that we don't have any investment in at, at all. Um, yeah, you know, okay. so I, I think for people to understand, like it, everybody is not out here trying to pump their bags. Guys, I can't move the price of Cardano at all. Zero percent. <laughs> What's the advantage for me to try to to try to pump my own bags and make a video about Cardano that number one, I'm not selling our Cardano is sitting on a staking pool. So how is that promotion? Like, if yeah. I'm not even no, the only thing you could do there. Sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but the only thing you could do there is you could promote it so people can stake on your pool, and then you can get dividends on that. But that's not a bad thing. That's I mean, yeah, you're I don't even know what I don't even, we barely make any money on that. You know, it, it, we do it for the community, really. But I understand what you're saying. You can always break down and find some kind of financial incentive. But is it really that far fetched that people just like to talk about crypto and certain coins because they believe in them? You see, no. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally so, agree. Yeah. And it is, it is sad because I mean, a lot of us are kind of incentivized because of the financial situation. Like now it's, you know, it's the bear market. It's, it's even worse now because you don't even get any companies reaching out and asking you to, to promote on their, on your channel. And if they do, then can you really trust that they're not just going to disappear? Like you said, yeah, you know, course. that's the risk. You're, well, you're that's, why, that's why the, the, the coins and tokens we all have to get away from. I think we all have to stop doing these promotions. It's a bad, broken business model because what happens is, and this happened on my channel so many times, we would do a promotion and then the teams knew the video was coming. Yeah. And they would dump the token at the top and they make it look like it's you. They would reuse retail retail as exit liquidity. The retail investors are losing. The influencer is losing. The only person that's winning is the person from the team with the tokens. Because if you think about it like this, every uh, on every transaction, what is there? There's a buy and a sell. That means on every transaction, depending on the, the trend of the coin, there's a winner and there's a loser, right? Yeah. Well, so if we're starting saying 50% of the people that invest in this coin that a, a promotion is done with are going to win, and you say, okay, well, half the audience wins, half the audience loses. No, no, that's not true, though, yeah. because it's skewed. Because out of the amount of coins that people are buying from, you know, the awareness that a video may bring, the team's got seventy percent of those. <laughs> so, so no, let's not forget about the VCs as well. VCs and well, the VCs, other, other the investors VCs dump on launches from private sales. The yeah. VCs dump uh, upon when a project comes to fruition. That, and I agree with you hundred percent. The VCs always dump the price on these tokens and try to make it look like it's whoever launched it or whatever launch pad or whoever made a video on about it. And yeah. it's the VCs that are cold and heartless and don't care. Yeah. Because as YouTubers who are faces out here, we yeah. put our credibility on the line every single day for what we do. It makes no sense as a business model to do that to your audience. If we did that consistently, there's no way we would still be the most viewed channel on YouTube. There's no way people would stay subscribed to the channel. There's no way people would be subscribing, follow me on Twitter. If, if that's your track record, that's your track record. Now, certain people might try to say that's your track record, but the people in your community know that it's different. Yeah. So it's not it's not a business model for influencers to do that. Certainly, there are some that do it. C certainly, there are some that exist that do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. There will always be people that do that. I mean, you can't change everyone. Everyone has their own model. But let me talk about the VCs a bit. Like, so we know, like, when we look at the tokenomics of a, of a project, normally they've got lockup times, normally, right? And they'll usually, some of them, not all of them will be transparent and will say the VCs are going to get the unlock from this date on or, but we know, and I've, I've known this like for over a year now, before that, if you would have asked me, I wouldn't have known, there are side deals being done, which give those VCs uh, cryptocurrencies or tokens, whatever, right? Early on from other funds, like from different allocations, they don't have to be from that VC fund. Mm -hmm. They could be from the marketing fund or whatever, so that it doesn't look obvious on the blockchain when you're looking at the block explorer. 
What's your take on that? Because I, I'm sure you also know that's happening a lot. Of course, the entire VC game is smoke and mirrors. And, and once again, this is why this is why there's no trust in our space. There, there's yeah. no trust in our space because the people like us that have done those kinds of videos in the past, the VC companies and the projects that use us to pump for exit liquidity and they make us look bad. You said it yourself just now. It's a game of smoke and mirrors. They say, oh, the VCs are locked up for this period of time. And yet they're making side backdoor deals to be able to still dump the price of the token. On listing. On listing. Exactly. Yeah. Guys, uh, launch pads, you should never buy a coin when it launches on a launch pad. You should never. These are things we've learned over the last two years. One, other, should... one other thing. One other thing. Sorry. Yeah. What about exchanges? Because we all know uh, teams, in order to get listed on an exchange, have to allocate a certain number of coins to those exchanges. What do you think of the dumping from the exchanges as well? Well, it, well, that's the entire thing FTX did. <laughs> that's the entire FTX game, which is very deep and dark to where basically what they would do is they would go to a project and they would say, hey, you know, we'd love to list you. We're Alameda. You know, we're a great partner for you. The New Genesis is a coin they did this to. Also, Reef is a coin they did this to. Uh, we believe they did this to Aptos. We don't know. Maybe Aptos had some involvement in it. Not really sure. Yeah. Uh, we know they did this to Casper. Uh, we know they did this to uh, Ronin Token, Axie Infinity. What they do is they go to them and they say, hey, we want to be a partner with you. And the project says, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if you're at, uh, if you're a teenager and you're at the mall and all of a sudden the hottest girl in the entire mall walks up to you and is like, hey, what's up? You want to go on a date with me? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying like, uh, yeah, I'd like to go on a date with you. Sure. You're like me. Yeah. <laughs> and what are you thinking? Oh, I've cashed in big time. That's how these projects would look at Alameda. Alameda would come to them and say, Hey, we want to partner with you. Let's you on F FTX or let's you on Liquid. And they'd say, who, us? <laughs> yeah, we're in. We're in cool. Thinking they've cashed in and they're going to make money. But what happened is, is they would take the coins from the projects and then they would counterfeit the coins on the exchange. So they had paper coins that had no backing and no tie to the actual supply. So okay. if you had a coin that was worth $100 and had a supply of a million tokens mm. uh, on the exchange, and they changed some ones and zeros on their website and on their mar in their market making. So now, oh, they actually have two million of those coins now. They have two million. We thought they only had a million. No, now they got two million. And your and your coin's a hundred dollars. You know what that does? That instantly drops the price of your coin to fifty dollars because the supply doubles. But it's yeah. not real. They, they were literally counterfeiting coins to do this. So. Yes, that's what the exchanges were doing. Not only were they dumping the prices and dumping the coins, and then what they would do is they'd take the real coins and they'd take them to Binance and they'd dump them, or they'd take them to MEXC, or they'd take them to OKX and they'd dump them over there. So the exchanges are certainly culpable in this. Um, and, and I think it's really like, once again, it's so easy for people to attack the influencers because we're the people who have the faces out there. Yeah, All the real dirty business is done behind the scenes. And that's why I'm really making a push. We're actually we're going to be trying to create. Um, you guys know a lot of people know I'm involved in politics now. We're, we're actually trying to work to create influencer standards that will go in a bill, uh, or, or possibly an amendment into either the DCCAP or the DECA uh, that that also could be coming out. Uh, that that's an exchange uh, act or exchange bill uh, in the United States. The DCCAP is the Boozman bill. A lot of people know that one. So we we want to make these rules clear for influencers so they know what they can and cannot do. And and it, some conversations have to be said about how something can be promoted if it has a speculative price. Because I think that's really where people get into an odd place. Because if the price is speculative and someone's paying you, the whole idea of why they're paying you is they want that speculation to go to the upside. Yeah. Then it course. becomes yeah. very dicey and very hard to make ethical decisions. But then let me ask you, let me ask you this. So what if you're a brand new project, right? Let's say you're not known in this space. Nobody Don't knows shortcut. you. And you Don't want shortcut. to, Build no, but you want to promote somehow. You want to market somehow. How do you do it? If you can't, if you can't do it through content creators. Don't, don't shortcut, build something. That's the problem. The problem okay. is they all want a shortcut. They all want to come in and say, no, we've got this really great idea, but these people have a head start. So we want to somehow be able to, you know, get rid of this shortcut. Nobody watched my channel for two and a half years. And you know that, Claudia. Yeah. Nobody watched my channel for two and a half years. You know what I did? I worked. You know what I did? I looked at Crypto Love and I, I looked at Crypto Crow and I looked at Crypto Beatles at the time. And I, I looked at Data Dash. I looked at Box Mining. I looked at all these people and I said, 
man, like, I wish I could be on their level. But you can't just get on their level. You have to put the work in. And that's what a lot of these projects do not want to do. And, and here's the environment. This, here's the climate this creates. Suddenly, you have projects that shortcut by marketing. Now, their market cap goes up extremely high, especially if we're getting into a bullish time of, of, of the cycle. Their market cap goes really high. They go from making uh, where they, before, let's say they you know maybe had a million dollars, to now they have a billion dollars. Okay, let's say the project goes up to you know seven or eight billion in market cap, and they they've got twelve and a half percent team tokens, and you know they get they got a billion dollars now. They're going from a million to a billion. What's their incentive to build anything if they haven't already built it? This is called the founder's dilemma, and this is the problem that we run into. They shortcut, they make a bunch of money, and then they have overpromised, and they can only under deliver because they don't have the the financial motivation that they had when they began. The projects that really believe in the space and believe in what they're doing and believe in their technology, they don't need to take those shortcuts because they understand they're in it for the long haul. And so that to me is, is another, there's so many reasons why this is a broken business model. And that's really what I want people to understand. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins in this, but the people that get fat pockets and, and, and get to leave high and dry, everybody yeah, else yeah. high and dry. Yeah, I mean, right now, people are basically looking at VCs, like who has invested in these projects. And then sometimes content creators will cover those projects for free without any investment, just because they see oh, Alameda have invested in these. Yeah. Or uh, what was the other one? Uh, 1EZ have invested yeah. in this, right? A16Z. A16, sorry. Yeah. So, you know, all these uh, popular VCs and it's just, it's crazy. It's like, uh, where, how do we even find that fine line to say, yeah, you know, let's not look at that and let's actually look at what they've actually built, you know, and is it, yeah. is it going to be useful? It's all about who you've got, who, who's the, who's backing you and who's promoting you. It's, it's crazy. It's, uh, yeah. you know. well, I think that's changing going forward. I, I think that's what we have to change and we all have to work together to change that because you and I both have responsibility in this. You know, we, we, we all as content creators and inf influencers on Twitter, I don't know if you call them content creators, if you put out some memes every day, but I mean, I guess you do, you know, cause you know where they get them from. But, but the idea is like, we all have responsibility to change this model. We have to actively change it together. And, yeah. and I think there's certainly, there are ways to do promotions that are okay. Like, obviously, if you are, uh, you know, if you are somebody who is, uh, you know, per, an exchange, like as long as you give disclaimers, like there's a third party exchange, you may lose your money, but we're sponsored yeah. by this exchange. I think that's okay. Yeah. I think people have to need to be really careful with lending services now and with, 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 uh, you know, with earn programs. I think people have to be extra careful about those right now, but cold storage wallets, treasure sponsor you. That's great. Good. Get that sponsorship, uh, analytic sites, uh, newsletters. Like these are ways that people can still make money, even in bear markets yeah. indicators, uh, you know, uh, uh trading indicators, algorithms, like uh, things like that. You can make money in a bear market and not have to promote tokens. And, and I really think we all need to just draw a hard line. So there are some some complicated issues when you get into something like an exchange, like Binance, that also has a token. Like, yeah. I, I think that can get a little dicey, but as long as you're not promoting the token itself, yeah, then you're, you're not talking helping about with the just the exchange. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and Web3 gaming is the same way. All well, these blockchain games, they have their own token, but. If you if you talk about the quality of the game and you review the game without bringing up, oh, you also have to have this token to play it. Oh, and the token could go up. I, I think that's okay, but it's really whenever we're doing anything that seems to to promote where you're paid to promote an idea that the coin should go up in value. I think that's where we get into very 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 dicey territory. And uh, going forward, after there are standards and rules established. Um, I definitely think that will be something that, you know, will be against those regulations or those standards. Interesting. Interesting. No, I mean, and there's so much to it. It's crazy, but I want to talk about two other things. So first of all, about the Dubai situation. I mean, we all know that a lot of conferences going on there. A lot of VCs are there as well. I mean, I've met some at some of the conferences I've been to and they said, yeah, we live in Dubai. We're doing this and that, you know? So, I mean, what's your take on that? Do you think there's something going on there in terms of people building contacts, uh, shields happening from that aspect as well, like from, you know, meeting people in Dubai and then pushing promotions and things like that. I mean, do you see that as a problem as well? Because I mean, in the past, we have seen it from some content creators linked to people in Dubai. What's your take on that? 
it is impossible not to be linked to people in Dubai if you're in crypto. Like that's where the crypto industry is moving. I mean, Binance is supposedly moving their headquarters there. Uh, we're we're probably opening up an office there at some point. Doesn't mean you're a bad person because you live in Dubai. Um, what what it means is like I, I want to go back to what I said before. Like I don't care where you met someone. If you're promoting a token, then I'm against it. I, I, right. and, and paid promotion, paid promotion. If you're talking about a coin because you really love it and you really have promise, that's yeah. different. That's well, how different. can you prove that? I mean, how can you prove that? Yeah, I really love that coin. How I can really you prove because there's a, there, there, there's a test of honesty and eventually it's going to be against the law. You see what I'm saying? Like, how, how can you prove uh, anything against anybody? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, how can you prove that someone doesn't own a stock that they're talking about? Like, you yeah. can't but you're trusted by the laws and the regulations that's against the law. And they yeah. have to know that if they're doing that, then they're going to face consequences. The, the same way that I've always disclosed on my channel, when we did pay promotions, even for tokens back in the day, yeah. because I knew that one day I could get held accountable for that. If well. you did promotions without disclosures, I think you are going to get in trouble for that. If it's discovered, especially if you're big enough. And that's why I always disclose from the very beginning. That's why I got more flack than anybody else. Cause I always said when I was doing a promotion. Yeah. So, so I, I think that, um, you know, it's a kind of thing where I don't think it matters where, you know, somebody lives. I think it just matters. Like if you're doing promotion and you're doing it ethically or honestly uh, around something that we think should be allowed, or if you're doing it for like, I don't think you should do it for tokens or coins period. So it doesn't matter where you meet someone you, yeah. you know, and there's going to be dishonest people out there, but I think the vast majority of people they understand what's at stake. Like, basically, to say that you know someone's just lying about something, you're you're saying that person doesn't understand what's at stake by them lying. Yeah. I think at this point, a lot of people get the issue. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, Ben, uh, let's get to the most important topic of this conversation. Yeah, forget about the bear market. This is the Polkadot channel. This is the Polkadot Maxi channel. We hate Maxis, but we love Polkadot. Uh, so what, what do you think about Polkadot? I mean, we know that you used to hold Polkadot because you've shown yeah. that publicly in your portfolio. Right. So have you participated in any of the parachain auctions on Polkadot? No. Yeah, no, we, we've not participated in the parachain auctions. And, you know, we are very closely watching um, Akala. We really liked Akala. Um, uh, well, I, uh, what's have that? you heard what happened to Akala? Exactly. With the yes, stable of course. Coin. Yeah. Yes. So we have heard what happened with a call. We certainly were not very happy about that. Um, so it kind of lost some momentum from us. Um, but what what I would say is this about Polkadot. Um, I was very bullish on Polkadot, and I said that they had a great potential to, uh, you know, possibly compete with Cardano. And uh, you know, for what I think is number two at this point behind Ethereum, Solana. Obviously, I never considered a, a competitor, which looks pretty smart now. I never considered Terra Luna a competitor, which Obviously, it looks pretty smart now. But what I would say is this. Ga Gavin Wood leaving Polkadot is, is a very bad historical sign. One second, one second. Let me slightly correct you. He's not leaving Polkadot. He's still in Polkadot. He's going to be a lead architect. But he's leaving the, he's not the CEO. CEO role. He's, he's leaving the CEO role. And to me, what that communicates is, and we'll talk about the history in a second, but what that communicates to me is, wow, they're, they're not confident at all in the architects. They actually have to send the CEO back down to that level to be able to fix it. That doesn't sound good. You know, to me, that's not the kind of momentum that a project wants. If you go to CoinMarketCap and you start going down and looking at the list of projects, and you look at any CEO that has left now, not a not a not a co-founder like Charles Hoskins and leaving Ethereum, but a founder or the CEO, the founder of Dogecoin left Jackson Palmer. The the only re nobody cared about him. He's useless. But the only reason Dogecoin made a comeback is because Elon Musk took that role over in a sense, right? Yeah. You look at uh, you start going down the list. You start saying, "Wow, Binance Coin." You know, CZ hasn't moved. XRP, Brad Garlinghouse hasn't moved. Cardano, Charles Hoskinson hasn't moved. Sandeep for Polygon has not moved. Justin Sun from Tron has, he, he actually has stepped down as, as CEO, but people know he still runs the show here. Um, uh, you know, Charlie Lee, gone from Litecoin. Where, where Ever since he left, it's been a slow tick down. Uh, you look at, um, you keep going down the list, Avalanche guy's still there, Chainlink's still there, Cosmos still there. 
Uh, Ethereum Classic, we know what happened there. Monero didn't really have a founder. Uh, Stellar, you know, Jed McCaleb still technically there, but I've been told that he doesn't actually work there anymore. And you start looking down at people, a, a project that have really lost their lead voice. Bitcoin Cash lost their lead voice with Roger Veri. He's not out front vocal anymore uh, like he used to be. Uh, and, and you start looking at other projects where where uh, people have stepped down. Uh, Do Kwan, obviously, from Terra, uh, you know, no longer in charge of that. Uh, Dan Larimer from EOS, no longer in charge of that. Also, Dan Larimer left BitShares. What happened after that? I remember. You just start looking down the list and you start saying, there's not a good track record. There's not a good track record for CEOs or founders stepping down and a project still flourishing. The only one literally that has done it is Dogecoin. Yeah. So, 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 so Polkadot would be the second. Success or mirror, it's going to have to go against the grain. Yeah. So Polkadot would be the second if it does it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what do you think of it? Did you sell all of your dot? Don't worry if you did. It's, nobody's going to judge you, but I'm just curious. Like. I, I think it's still sitting on, sitting on Celsius. Ooh. And that's where we had it. Oh. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like all of our altcoins basically were on Celsius. Right. So, yeah. Um, we don't have a ton, like a lot of stuff. That's why we haven't actually done a portfolio video where we've shown our own portfolio because we don't even know how to handle it because yeah. what do we, we show our coins are on Celsius. Well, that gives everybody a misrepresentation of what we actually hold. We can't yeah. touch that stuff and we may never get it back again. Um, so with Polkadot, I, I think, um, I believe that is one we held. We held most of our altcoins on Celsius actually, uh, stupid, you know, obviously we, but you are generating and, dividends there. So that was one yeah. of the reasons. Of course, of course. That's what. That's why we. And, and there, you right? knew, you knew Alex Mashinsky. I mean, you had him on our channel, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, several times. So you know, you, so, you are your friends, basically. So I mean, obviously, you trust. Friends is probably a strong word. Fr okay fr and... Friends is probably a strong word. I never talked to him outside of an interview. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I had 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 definitely a, a friend friendly relationship with him for sure. Yeah. Oof, crazy, crazy. So I mean, what do you think? I mean, aside from. All this, what's going on now with uh, with the situation with the market and all that. I mean, what do you think? Because like the, in terms of development activity, Polkadot is doing very well. I mean, it was only the second after Cardano. So, yeah. I mean, considering the development activity, considering the L1s on the Polkadot ecosystem are constantly developing. We got Moonbeam, which is the number one in terms of development. You probably heard of them. Yeah, of Astar, course. Moonbeam, Astar yeah. Network as well. They're pretty big in Japan. Yeah, uh, There's Centrifuge as well. Uh, Kala used to be, but now, you know, it's kind of shaky. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what do you think if, if there's a lot of development, I mean, how do you see the future of it? So, so look, I, I not, not Polkadot yeah. itself, but the, the layer ones building on top right. of it. I, I really hate to do that. Like I hate coming out and having to give my personal opinions on stuff like this when it's negative because I already know what happens. I mean, you come in and say, he's fighting the project. I'm just giving you my personal experience. My, my personal experience is, Number one, when CEO steps down or leaves or a founder steps down or leaves, it's bad for the project. Number one. Number two, personally, I've spoken to a few different projects who originally were going to launch on Polkadot and have since picked up and left and are moving to other chains or creating their own chains. By their words, not mine, because they didn't like the direction of where Polkadot was going. And so because of those personal interactions, regardless of looking at the development or looking at the entire user, you understand the ecosystem a lot better than me. Uh, obviously, this is what you, this is your number one primary ecosystem you look into, whereas we we have several, but obviously Ethereum and Cardano and, and kind of the XRPL as well being the major ones that we look at. To me, what I can't about only... Shiba. You should love Shiba, Ben. So many people no, have been shilling it on your live chat. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't do me. It always cracks me up when I look at your live chat, especially on ETB. Ship, ship to the moon, ship, ship, ship. Well, now there's the bit, the bit boy in you, you know, that's the new, <laughs> that's the new meme coin that the, the people are pushing and they put out some funny memes and stuff, but I would never, I, I just don't support meme coins. It's not really what I do, but I, I think that, you know, what it boils down to is this is right now, my faith in Polkadot is really shaken. Now, like I said, money sitting on Celsius. Well, we can't really move it. So we're not selling it. We can't yeah. touch it. Yeah. So because of that, like, it's not like with my actions in my pocketbook, I don't have a pocketbook, my wallet, mm -hmm. uh, that I'm actually making negative decisions towards it. But what I am saying is it's got a lot to prove in a short period of time in this next year to be able to get me back on board. And I'm open to it. If, if they prove me wrong, I would love for them to prove me wrong. For me personally, 
I'm in a very kind of skeptical mode right now. It's just a warning sign to me when the CEO steps down. Yeah. Or yeah, founder. Totally founder. Gavin Wood's a founder. The same. I felt yeah. the same. And I've said this on my channel. We never really know the real reason. I mean, he said that I'm techie at heart and I want to be an architect yeah. and I want to pay attention to what the tech guys are doing and keep an eye out on the architecture and that. But there's, you never really know like the real reason behind yeah. a person stepping down, right? I mean, deep down, it could be legal reasons for all we know it. Yeah. Uh, it could be. Uh, and and Char Charles Hoskins said he reasons. thought it was a good move, actually. Charles Hoskins said he, Gavin Wood's a great architect. He thinks it's a good move. So there are some people that disagree that think maybe it is a good move. So, you know, definitely we give him the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, we can't sell. So, you know, we'll sit and watch and see what happens. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, ben, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you've given a lot of information in this video, especially talking about the bear market, the situation, what people should hope for and should look forward to, of course. Thank you for giving us your thoughts. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video. Of yeah. course, as always, if you want to check out Ben's channel, you probably know it. But just in case you don't, <laughs> you can find the pinned comment uh, down in the underneath the video and also in the description uh, with the link to his channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.